when the dog bites, when the bee stinks, when I'm feeling sad. I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. This is a very exciting room. Lots of entertainment, a lot of energy, unbelievable. And I'm sitting here with Richard Frankel, and we are in Feinstein's 54 Below, and it is a paradise for entertainment. We have people coming from Broadway, from everywhere. It's a place that you should be. Richard, how did you start this club? It's fabulous. Yeah, I have uh, two partners, Tom Vertel and Steve Baruch, and we have been producing Broadway and off-Broadway shows since 1984. Really? Yes. So oh, exciting. So we've... we've uh, We've done it a long time, and we did a lot of uh, off-Broadway. We did the original productions of Driving Miss Daisy and Frankie and Johnny and oh the Clear Balloon and Love Letters and Stomp and, and uh, a lot of, lot of off-Broadway shows and then a lot of Broadway shows, both plays and musicals. Uh, we did Hairspray, Producers, wow. Smokey Joe's Cafe, um, lots of shows, four Sondheim revivals, Company, uh, uh, Little Night Music, lots. And we just one day said, you know, there's no club that, there's no nightclub, there's no supper club, there's no entertainment really that celebrates Broadway music. Exactly. You can see Broadway uh, musicians on, uh, singers on Broadway and, and not, not very many places else. And also the clubs that existed at the time, the nightclubs were, um, they, they had various issues, either sightline issues, they were converted ballrooms and hotels frequently, so right. the sightlines weren't great, the sound systems weren't great. Talk about sound system, I understand you have it built in the wall. Uh, well, our sound system is really state of the art. Um, so we decided that uh, we made a list of everything we didn't like about all the clubs in New York, about all of the nightclubs, the similar ones, the supper clubs. Um, and food was on the list as well. It was, it Delicious. Was, I well, must say, your food well, was absolutely fabulous. I was surprised, you. especially for a club. You wouldn't expect you to have fabulous food, thank but you, you have fabulous well, food. Well, we've made an effort. It's been a priority since the beginning. I'm now in the kitchen with Jason, and this is Feinstein's 54 Below, and I am so excited because he makes the best dishes. So what are you going to make now? We're going to make a crab cake. After that, we're going to do a short rib and then a vegan plate of tofu with coconut curry sauce. And do you have a lot of requests for the vegan dishes? We do. Really? Everything, everything moves very well here. That's wonderful. Because it's so good. Yeah. All right. That's wonderful. So let's see, what are we going to do first? Sure, we're going to do the crab cake. What do you prepare with it? Um, we have a little roasted tomato sauce. And this is something you make yourself? Yes. Yeah. Fresh every day. Yeah. And you're open seven days a week, so are you working seven days a week? I'm not working seven days a week personally. <laughs> it feels like. But you know what I think is wonderful is that all the chefs have this passion for what they're doing. We're going to do the crab cake for you right now. We get a nice corn salsa and a little roasted tomato sauce. And this is what goes on top of it? Well, this underneath? goes on the bottom. Oh, okay. So it's a nice little condiment, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. And then what do you have with the crab cake? Uh, well, this is the roasted tomato sauce, this is the corn salsa and some avocado, and then I'll put the crab cake on top. So that's the whole dish? Is it an appetizer? It is an appetizer. What I love is the fact that, you know, all the chefs have this artistic way of preparing things and also appeasing to the eye, which I think is important. And that's the corn and, and, and the mix of all those uh, things. What are all those things? A little there? jalapeno, roasted red pepper. So it has a little spice, which is nice. It does. A little yep. lime juice. Mm -hmm. Has a nice little flair. And then, uh, then you just take the crab cake and you put it on top? Yes. And how often do you get your seafood in? Every day. Yeah. And then the avocado goes on the side. Right on top. Oh, really? Wow. A little upland press. It's simple, it's appetizing, and delicious. So we, we made this list, and we decided to open one, and we went looking for a space. And just by chance, we found um, this space underneath where Studio 54 was. Studio 54 was right up there, right over there, and this was some downstairs room. 
Just vacant. Lord, Lord, yes, and by the time we got to it, it was totally vacant. It was, it was a cellar actually with pipes and cement floors and puddles on the floor and oh all that. Oh my God! So we went to uh, three of our favorite designers. Um, uh, John Lee Beatty's a very distinguished set designer. He's a multiple uh, Tony winner, and Ken Billington is the same uh, as a lighting designer. The wow. Both of them been designing for many, many years and won many awards on many, many Broadway shows and a great sound designer named Peter Hylensky, who does a lot of Broadway shows. And we said, basically, build us a club. And uh, John, uh, the set designer, asked us sort of what we wanted, and we said we wanted to evoke an elegant speakeasy without being a theme restaurant, not being too overt about it. Um, and uh, we wanted it to look beautiful, and people want to look beautiful when they were there and the rest of it. And, um, and it's a place that you get dressed up when they well, come. Well, we had hopes that people would get dressed <laughs> up, and some do. But you know, these days it's, it's it's difficult. But people come dressed all kinds of ways here now. But the fact is, he dreamed this up, and we built it. Beautiful. And How it long did it took take? Us, it only took us about six months really? to build it, actually. Wow. And uh, there was some challenges with building in a basement, but. Um, it's been wonderful, and it's uh, we have, a, and so we have a great uh, lighting system. The sound system is because we were Broadway producers and accustomed to spending crazy amounts of money. We probably spent more on the sound system than any club owner in his right mind would mm -hmm. have spent. But mm -hmm. the fact is, we have an absolutely brilliant uh, a sound system, and uh, we do recordings and we do a lot of streaming now, and we have a great sound operators, and uh, it's a matter of real pride to us. And you also have a lot of Broadway performers coming we in. We do, we do. Our, our opening act, the first act here, who performed here was Patti Lapone, with whom we'd done several Broadway shows. We did Back her Gypsy, and uh, we did her Sweeney Todd, and uh, she, was, she was the opening act, and uh, it's continued. Uh, Brian Stokes Mitchell is coming up, Kelly O'Hara was just oh here, my God. and we have a stars large and uh, uh, never small. Less famous, never small. <laughs> I'm trying to think. The uh, gifted and uh, you know, but but not small. We also we we do two shows a night, seven nights a week. Wow! And when you do the math, that's 700 shows a year. Oh my God! We do. So uh, most performers do one show, maybe two. A few do a whole week. Marilyn May, who is the great jazz singer, right. who is going to celebrate her 94th birthday here mm. in a few weeks, in a couple of weeks. Uh, not celebrate it, she's going to celebrate it by working, by performing yeah. uh, two weeks worth of shows. Fabulous. So uh, we do... We and will she be doing two shows a night? No, or she'll do one show. One show yeah, everybody, night. most people do, do one show a night. Life is a, a cabaret, old chum. Why don't you come to the cabaret? Come taste the wine, come hear the band, come blow your horn, start celebrating, right this way your table's waiting, and no use permitting some prophet of doom to boo 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 wipe every smile away. Life is a, a cabaret. But um, so we've done a great many performers over the past 10 years, and we also produce a lot of shows to fill our time. We do reviews of shows that had played at particular Broadway theaters. We celebrate the music of various pop singers. We do all sorts of of uh, of shows right. for our audiences, yeah. Yeah, and I think, it, you know, the interesting thing is the fact that you said it's in a basement, but you don't feel like you're in a basement. No, you yeah. don't. It's a, it's a very elegant basement. Yeah, because, you know, in basement. New York had a lot of cabarets back in the 70s. And, yes. And I don't know if they had them in the 80s, but I know that in the 70s it was, it was the thing. You had, like, a zillion of them, and now there's no place to go except yeah. here. Well, it's a difficult business, I'll put it that way. It's I'm sure. It's a difficult sure. business in this day and age. Um, but we uh, we love it, yeah. And we're we're committed to preserving this kind of a place for people to go, and we're committed to the music 
right. and uh, all aspects of and it. And what happened during COVID? I mean, obviously everyone was affected. Well, during COVID, we, we closed for a while, right. for much of the time. And uh, the, uh, the government programs were very, very helpful. Right. I give a shout out to President Biden. Yes. <laughs> they, they really saved us. Yeah. They really saved us. For, uh, we, we got a couple of grants that permitted us to uh, pay some of the staff and keep them going and not losing them. Right. And then we got um, other grants. They had a shuttered venues grant program just designed for music right. places. And um, that has allowed us to reopen and still we're, we're doing a lower capacity business than we did pre-pandemic, but the government grants allowed us to make up the difference. And it That's really good. has been a lifesaver. They were really, I gotta say, they really were wonderful. That is fantastic. And there were plenty of, New York would be a very different place had they not oh. in, in, injected the, those funds into uh, helping entertainment survive. Absolutely. We we're have all going to gonna benefit from it. We have to help our own as opposed to all the other countries. You know, help us. You yes, know. well, hopefully we can help everyone. But, yeah, yeah, but, but first we have to help ourselves. That's right. You know, sure. and it, you know, it's a beautiful room. I mean, you've got piano and you have, like the bands, how big are the, are the they bands? They range from, we do, uh, we had a show last night that we do regularly that's called Sondheim Unplugged and it's just a piano. It's right. different singers singing Sondheim songs just with the, what we call devilishly difficult piano parts. His <laughs> piano parts are amazing. Yeah. But we do shows that have only a piano and we have shows that do uh, uh, trios and shows that have six piece bands and there's even an, an all woman 19 piece big band wow that plays here as on well that stage? on occasion on that stage <laughs> they, they all fit in there's wow. a few big band shows that and they're you know the musicians do it out of love of course of course certainly the economics of that are not good um but they're wonderful and and, and that sound in this space is really thrilling oh yes yeah now when did you do this after Sondheim passed away, or is this before? No, so we've been doing that Sondheim show for years, for seven or eight years. I see. Um, and um, the devotion of the theater community properly to Sondheim is, uh, is there's got a lot of devotion. There's oh, a yes. lot of devotion. I think everyone was aware that um, a genius walked among us, and I think we all felt particularly those who actually had contact with him, and he was very accessible. When he did shows, he showed up, he went to rehearsals, he spoke with the actors, he had people to his house. He was, right. he, he, he was very accessible and very wonderful. And I think we all felt uh, blessed that we had a genius living among us. Oh, yes, yes. So his loss is really uh, felt. Oh, absolutely, yeah. the whole community. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. But and his music is so memorable. So memorable. Yeah. So memorable. I was I said to someone last night, I was listening to a song from Company, which somebody was singing a song from Company, which was done in 1970. And I was thinking, oh my God, these lyrics. He was at the height of his genius in 1970. And then I thought, no, Into the Woods was 1987. He was, right. he did this for, you know, from 1958 to very recently. He, he kept going, he kept writing, it kept coming. Right, it was amazing, really, absolutely. It was really amazing. wonderful. When, was you, when you mentioned company, I said, I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. <laughs> I, I love Lane Stritch. Yes. <laughs> do you remember her? Yeah, I do remember uh, uh, Lane Stritch. We did a little night music with her, mm. and um, it was memorable in yes. every respect. And Lane was memorable. In oh, every yes, respect she was too. a character all to herself. She, she, uh, she was. She had very high standards. Yes. 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 And a voice. <laughs> a, a very unusual voice. Yeah. She was, she was wonderful. Also much beloved. Yeah. But Broadway is uh, a very special place. Um, and the entertainers are so passionate about what they're doing. Yes. And uh, they're very devoted to, you know, what they're doing, which I think yes. is amazing. Yeah. They got to be. Because yeah. it's a lot of work and not a lot of money. Yeah. Every job in the theater is a lot of work and, Absolutely. and uh, generally not a lot of money. And um, people do love what they do. Uh, they have to. Yeah. You know, it's what yeah. I call a passion. It is a passion. You have to have a passion. Yes. And, you know, in life, if you don't have a passion, you shouldn't do it. That's right. It's like you producing all the shows. You have a passion for yeah. it. 
It's also a uh, passion for each other. It's a very much a team effort. Oh, I've, yes. I've, uh, I've likened it to uh, working in a firehouse or a police station. I mean, it's a real, <laughs> it's a real team effort. You're in it together. Yes. And it's very difficult circumstances, usually. And, um, and the restaurant business, actually, when I started learning the little that I've learned in the 10 years hasn't been enough, um, about the restaurant business, the similarities I noted right away. There were people just as devoted. Absolutely. Just as I you know, like to say in the kitchen there, the great ones in the kitchen, we have a few, <laughs> they're, they're chasing the next plate. Yes. They're chasing this perfection Absolutely. in the same way that theater people are. And um, creatively. Yes, and creatively. And frequently overworked and underpaid as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's a... Uh, a passion. A passion. Another <laughs> Again. thing, a passion. So there was a real... Um, the transition, because I, I, I now I, I work in this uh, uh, restaurant as much as I do in the theater these days, it w is um, very similar. Richard, I want to thank you so much. This has been a thank delightful you. experience and also a little knowledge that I've gained about your club, which I thank think you. is fabulous. And, you know, we need more cabaret in this town. That's right. You know, and this is such a beautiful place that people can come, relax, have great food, great drinks, and entertainment. Yes. What else is there? That's right. There's nothing else. Exactly. Thank right. you so much. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Chasing Wild Ass. Oh, it's not what you're thinking. It's all about my travel around the world. I have interspersed photos and recipes to whet your appetite and allow you to dream and discover and rediscover these faraway destinations. The title came about while we were in Koch Wild Ass Sanctuary chasing jackasses in Gujarat, India. Chasing Wild Ass is food for the soul. It's adventure, it's history, it's culture, it's culinary, and it's a lifestyle. Chasing Wild Ass will entertain you and massage your soul. It's a celebration of life. You have to live every moment as if it's your last. My world is your world. So remember, get up, get out, and travel! I'm now in the kitchen with Jason, and this is Fine Steam 54 Below, and I am so excited because he makes the best dishes. What's the second dish now? Um, we're going to do a short rib. Oh, okay. I love this short ribs. This is a beef ribs. short rib. rib. We have a uh, Yukon gold potatoes. It's whipped. Mm -hmm. um, we get the vegetables of carrot, um, pearl onions, uh, Brussels sprouts, and a little uh, a red wine uh, demi sauce. Right. So Finished. it's a full meal. Yeah. Yeah. This is an entree. Yeah. That's great. Fabulous. I know everything you do is fantastic. I mean, the things that I had were just mm, so delicious. I was really surprised for a cabaret because in cabaret you never think of having good food. Sure. But. I was really surprised. I think a lot of people are surprised when they come here and eat yeah. the food and have it, enjoy the show. Oh my God. And the combination, you know, you're relaxing with the food and the cocktails and you're seeing a great show. Exactly. You know, and all these stars from Broadway and everywhere come in and it makes it a full evening. And we'll be right back. I'm through with love. I'll never fall again. Said adieu to love. Don't ever call again For I must have you or no one And so I'm through with love Christmas time is here <laughs> We'll be drawing near Oh, that we could always see such spirit through the year. Christmas time is here. John Hagen's The Globetrotter is like no other travel book in the world. When I think of travel, I think of friends from around the world. I've traveled to Malaysia, Thailand, India, everywhere. You're going to absolutely love the book and the recipes. You will whet your appetite with these incredible aromatic recipes. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out, and travel. You know, as a matter of fact, when I was coming, it was a late show, and I thought, I don't know if I want to be up that late, but I'm so glad I came. Yes. Because one, it was fabulous. One of the two shows we do daily. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. exactly. So let's do the next dish then. Sure. 
What is this that's boiling here? Potatoes? Yes, this is potatoes. Those are the Yukon gold potatoes that we make oh. for the short rib dish. And what is that, please? This is the, um, the Yukon gold potatoes. Oh, I see. It's a little cream, a little butter. Oh, that's simple enough. And a little star tip for presentation. Ooh. It started off looking like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me hungry just looking at all these wonderful dishes. Now, how long do you have to prepare the short ribs? The short ribs cook about four to six hours. That's a long time. Yeah, that's an average. So they're well done, in other words. Yeah, they're fully cooked. They're braised. Yeah. Now, what happens if someone would like to have them but not uh, as well cooked? Well, we don't do temperatures for this. Oh, I see. You know what's nice, too, about your dishes is the colors, you know? It's just sure. uh, it's very colorful. And here's some more colors for the plate. Yeah, exactly. It's really creating art. You know, food is just... Food could be food, but the way that you do it is just so artistic. Thank you. These are roasted carrots. And the pearl onions. Yes, and they're roasted as well. And? Just a little um, Brussels sprout leaves as garnish. Right. And wow. I'll, just, I'll finish the sauce. And what's the sauce? Well, this is the red wine demi. Oh, okay. And I'm just going to finish it with a little, a little butter. And how long does it take you to make the sauce? Um, this is a process. It's like a three-day process of oh roasting my. bones, reduction. Oh, my God. It's a process. Yes. So just add the butter and just finish it. Get it nice, nice and shiny. Ooh. So do you have more butter in it? Just at the very end. Oh, the very end. Okay. Yes, it makes it shiny. Right. That I've never heard of before. That's interesting. Gives it a sheen. Very nice. And then you just top it off with this great sauce. Yes, sir. That's the tofu, it's an extra firm tofu. Right, and then this is a... Uh, so, uh, blanched snow peas. Snow peas, and then what's this? This is water chestnuts. Oh my, oh my God. And then you, you that's, that's it. Well, this is baby bok choy. Right, would you consider this an entree? It is an entree, yes. And then, uh, which I think is really great, you know, for the uh, vegans. Sure, you know. it sells very well. So you're offering things for everybody, actually, whether you're a meat lover or a vegetarian or I say veggie, 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 <laughs> uh, or any of those kind of wonderful dishes, you know, like someone who's in the seafood, you know, like the crab. Sure. So you've got everything here. We cover the, the wide range. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to be able to include all those things for different people, you know. Yes. But then when you have a table, let's say you have a table of 20 people and each one wants a different dish, isn't that complicated? Oh, uh, it's a process. We can sort it out, but um, we do the best that we can. Yeah, of course. Because that, that to me would be a nuisance if everybody wanted to, see, you know, they all have all of it sure. coming out at the same time. At different temperatures. Exactly. That's where the challenge comes from. Exactly. Yes. Wow, the kitchen is just so, it's mechanical in a way, you know, you've got to, Maneuver, it's like juggling, you know. You have to be an octopus, like a wild dog. Exactly, very good idea. So, what is that now? Butter? No, this is uh, oil, blended oil. oil. Right, okay. So, first you start with the blended oil, you heat it. Yes. But not too long. No, you don't want to get any color. Yeah. You don't want it to burn. No. Yeah. So, now you throw in the shiitake mushrooms. Right, okay. Baby the only one in my family. And how long does this have to be prepared or cook? Um, most of these are blanched already, so we're just heating them up. 
So this is going to heat up for how long? Uh, a few minutes just to two get minutes. it hot and add some salt and pepper. Right. I love the flames, the fire. I like it. And then when this is all done and you're plating, do you put the sauce on top of it? Now that the sauce goes on under, first. Right, underneath. So I can actually put it on now. Okay. So how much of that do you put on? Just to fill the bottom of the plate? Sure. One thin layer. Oh, that's lovely. That's how a curry coconut. It's got a nice uh, yellow uh, hue to it. Very well balanced. A little coconut milk, it works very well together. Ooh, that sounds great. Add the tofu. The lay the tofu on top of the sauce. Lovely. Already, everything is right on top. It's an attractive dish. Thank you. Nice and colorful. And the strange thing, it doesn't look like a vegetarian dish, but it is. I'll finish with the the bean sprouts. And have a little uh, crispy chickpeas. Oh my gosh. Sprinkle a few on top. That is really lovely. These three dishes are absolutely beautiful, appetizing, and who could resist? Exactly. I can't imagine. Jason, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful experience exploring your kitchen, these beautiful dishes. I feel hungry just thinking about them. They're so lovely. And the food here is exquisite. So thank you, and I can't wait to come back. Until next week, I'm John Haggins, and this is The Taste of New York. So long for now. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so sad.